I am going to give my prayer player last. We can wrap this thing up. I'm really excited for this prayer play. You know, it's a player I've been trying to fit in all my lineups this week, and that's rookie Wandell Robinson. Now, he's a player that JWB has been trying to encourage everyone to stash since draft season. Uh, just looking at this opportunity where you're putting a bank on who's going to step up in this offense. Is it going to be a Kadarius Tony? Is it going to be a Kenny Galladay? Is it going to be Sills, Richie James, Sterling Shepard? You know, it, and we always felt, you know, it was good to get one of Tony or Wandell at the end of your drafts, get him in. Uh, Wandell was the cheaper option and the opportunity was there. He was handpicked by this team and we were really excited to see what he could do. You know, so, <clears throat> you know, we even talked about him on the Dynasty Digest this week, trying to get all competing teams to go send your second round pick for Wando Robinson. You know, if the manager's is trying to see this as a, a, a window to sell, go do it. And hopefully, you know, people were able to get Wando Robinson over the last two weeks before this morning's news where we got an even better indication that Giants football is, you know, they're all in with their confidence on Wando Robinson and they perceive him very highly because they moved off Kadarius Tony, the other guy that we felt was capable of stepping in and, you know, adding fantasy value. So what is Wano Robinson for your, you know, for your teams? I don't think he's the type of player to really get downfield or to rack up a lot of yards, especially in a Daniel Jones offense. It's only probably going to put up 200 a game. But I I do think, you know, through a lot of low A dot type slot work, Wano is a perfect, uh, you know, PPR type machine to just come in and get peppered with targets, you know, six to eight targets a game. So I like Wando rest of the season as a flex institution type player, you know, for any reason he's on your way or go at him. You know, I prefer stashing him to guys we mentioned before, like Alec Pierce, Romeo Dobbs, even a guy with Jahan Dotson or some RB3 options like your Latavius Murray's Gus Edwards. I'd rather have Wanda Robinson on my team. So if, if he's out there, I would go pick him up. Uh, we mentioned in our segment a few weeks ago that Isaiah McKenzie, uh, when we were talking about Isaiah McKenzie, that Josh Allen's led the league in slot targets since the end of the league. But that was largely due to Brian Dable, who was calling the plays, you know. With, with Dable coming into Rutherford, New Jersey, hand selecting Juan Dale, and now shipping out, you know, Kadarius Tony for just a third round compensatory pick. I'm pretty confident that Juan Dale is a big part of their plan moving forward. Um, you know, he's put double digit points up for fantasy two weeks in a row, and that's having worked up from 29% of snaps to 69% of the snaps last week. And this is the first week where he's been completely off the injury report, two full practices in a row off the report. You know, Sterling Shepard was highly involved early and he was out there to close to 90% of the snaps. And that was out of the slot. So I expect Wanda to work his way up to, you know, the 80 percent moving forward and should just be peppered with targets. So I really like him as, as your final flex on your teams, not just this week, but probably rest of the season. Even if you don't love the matchup, he'll always be in consideration. It'll be him or another guy rest of the season. You're going to be asking yourself to play Wanda or this guy. So, Go get them. Put them in your lineups. I'm all for it. I wasn't in love with Rondale during the draft process. I thought he was good against zone, but I thought they had to, the team that got him would have to manufacture plays for him. But just seeing the work the last two weeks he's gotten, especially the touchdown in week one, or the first week that he scored, I should say, over by double-digit points, they got him on an end around. So they are totally willing and able to put him in those positions. And so I think he's in a perfect position like team wise and roster makeup to do so. I think this is a perfect uh, prayer. It, um, it's like sacrilege. Cause I was so, I was so off of Wandale in the off season, but this is, this is such a perfect matchup to play him in because of the fact that there is no depth in that receiver room. Even if Galladay comes back, he's, he's no threat at all, even outside anymore. So the, he will be peppered with targets. I think he can get open cause he's very good against them, which means he's very good in small spaces and reading his defenders alignments, which even in man, You'll be able to do that as well as long as Daniel Jones is on the same page. They manufactured a lot of touches for him last week or targets, even uh, setting up blocks outside. He dropped a couple passes, a couple hit his hands. But um, I like the fact that we're seeing this. It's not like, oh, go create something yourself. No, they are literally writing a place for him to be successful. I mean, I'm excited. He might be the most talented receiver on the team. So I think he might be already, yeah. 